September 2024. So of course, we're wasting no time in September. We're under the influence of Virgo season. It's a time of awareness, of adjustment, of redesigning, restructuring our physical realm. Of course, the physical realm stems from the major changes that have already taken place in our mental plane, in our heart space. Thank you, Mercury retrograde for that. We are coming into September using the vibration of both six and nine. Six, of course, is the adjustments to the mental plane, the adjustments to our habits, to our routines, to our day to day life. The nine energy is bringing forth a bigger, greater, grander mission, grander purpose, if you will, as we wrap up some cycles that, of course, have been very turbulent in trying to bring to a certain close, a certain finality before we jump into a brand new path and really start working towards a brand new goal in a different direction. That vibration will be shifting as we shift seasons throughout the month of September. However, we are still very much under the influence of Virgo energy, which of course is about us kind of detoxing from the gunk, from the old version of self, from the old systems, the old belief systems, the old ways of looking around and seeing the world. And so it may take a little bit of time just because, of course, Mercury, who rules over the Virgo season in its entirety, is still in his post retrograde shadow period. It will take a time, but the clarity, small bits, small pieces, snapping together one by one, revealing what needs to stay, what needs to go. Again, in true Virgo fashion, wasting no time at all. September 1st, we have back to back energy shifts. Now, I am going to recommend if you haven't already to not only download your Virgo season e-guide, but to take a listen to your Zodiac forecast for the month. You can jump over to Patreon, access all 12 or download them individually from my website. Now I say that because you're really going to want to stay at least in alignment with the energies. Of course, the goal is always to get ahead of these particular energy shifts. September 1st, we have two back-to-back -back things happening, starting with Uranus, the Great Awakener, who likes us to expect the unexpected, who likes to throw wild card curveball events at us. Uranus is going retrograde in Taurus energy. Coincidentally enough, if you believe in coincidences, taking place at 27 degrees, 15 minutes, which is where we had the full moon in Aquarius pop off, which Uranus ruled over. So there's likely going to be a connection to some epiphanies, some ideas that we were downloaded with under that full moon in Aquarius that we are going to spend the remainder of 2024 kind of rearranging, restructuring our physical realms around. Now in Taurus energy, this is going to destabilize our physical realm. This is going to shake us up, wake us up in our routines, in our relationships, in our money matters. Basically, we have to defrag, eliminate, release, purge the leftover debris from the old version of self's realm and reality that, of course, we're living in right now that we have zero connection to. There is going to be a lot of curveballs, a lot of wild card events really picking up the pace as we move through September. And of course, Uranus going retrograde in Taurus energy is merely the first domino to fall. The exact same day on the first, we have Pluto, the great transformer who's been retrograde, creeping back into the 29th critical crisis karmic degree of Capricorn energy. So we've been dealing with this energy since 2008. This has been the deconstruction of the power on the collective scale and in our own individual lives. We've definitely been having a power struggle with the people, places and things that we have built our physical realm around. The Capricorn energy, very karmic in nature. Saturn does rule over the Capricorn energy, mind you. We have to take a good look at what is still standing in our physical realms that we've been trying to put behind us, that we've been trying to bring to a closure, to a finality point. Again, this is like the final level, the final boss of a video game. We will never see Pluto in Capricorn energy in our lives ever again after this particular transit. So whatever debris is currently still lingering from the deconstruction of the old foundation, the old structures that we have been trying to put behind us, the power struggles that have been ensuing, trying to again close karmic chapters out, this is the final go. 
at really removing the physical structures in our physical realms that are holding us back from going after this new path, this new vision, goal, and dream. September 2nd, we will have the new moon pop off in Virgo energy. This is going to be at 11 degrees and 11 degrees is a master builder, master creator number. So of course the new moon is the dark phase of the moon. There's no illumination of light in the sky. We have to sit in the funk. We have to sit in the funk. There are going to be situations and circumstances pop off that we can no longer tolerate, that we can no longer deal with. The craziness, the chaos has to be brought into order. This is what the Virgo energy does. It's going to illuminate where we have bad habits that we have to kick to the curb, where we have to have better habits in order to keep ourselves happy and healthy. This is going to be an illumination of some negative narratives that need to be kicked to the curb as well, where we have to flip the script, rewire our brain into something a little bit more encouraging, a little bit more supportive. At the end of the day, the Virgo energy wants to highlight the problems in order for us to fix them. And the Virgo energy allows us to have a new level of consciousness, a new level of awareness to act as the observer, to see very, very specifically what has to end, what has to go. Of course, we create the framework on what it is that we would prefer to experience instead. And a lot of it has to do with healthier habits when it comes to taking care of our mind, our body, our soul. September 4th, Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, will be moving out of the Gemini energy that is helping us to plan and strategize a, let's call it well thought out, very thoroughly thought out plan on the options, the opportunities that we now have for new passions, new wants, new needs, new desires to take hold. Problem is, is that now Mars is moving into cancer energy. Pay special attention to the topics and themes that will be popping off as Mars will eventually move into Leo energy, then go retrograde, then creep back into this cancer energy. We will be revisiting a lot of the present moment topics and themes at the beginning of 2025. That's right. We are going to have Mars go retrograde in the heart and soul of the Zodiac in that Leo energy, and he will creep all the way back into the Cancer energy and go direct at the beginning of 2025. So, of course, we're a little bit more moody, more kind of dependent on our mood, on our attitude, on our intuition in Cancer energy. We're definitely playing the defense. We want to fight, defend, protect what it is that we've already built emotionally speaking, within ourselves, in our home, in our family dynamics, we will see a little bit of progress be made when it comes to making moves that will further help us along with the safety, security, and stability that we need to feel not only within our emotions, but within our physical realm to last for the long term. Now, there's likely going to be a lot of pop-offs in the home and the family dynamic, because of this particular energy. But again, cancer energy, we're talking about boundaries. Mars being the god of war, we are definitely going to implement some of those boundaries and we are going to hold that line at whatever cost is needed in order to protect the peace, the stability that we've already created. On September 9th, we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, ruler over Virgo season, moving back into Virgo energy. Of course, we went retrograde at four degrees in Virgo energy, and then we crept all the way back into the Leo energy. So this is, again, revisiting, retracing our steps from topics and themes that have already gone by, analyzing, picking apart, if you will, where it is that we could do things better where it is that we need better habits, better routines, where it is that we need to take better care of ourselves. Again, reminder, Virgo energy definitely focuses in on the problem in order for us to fix it. However, because we're still retracing our steps up until that fourth degree, there's likely going to be a lot of connecting the dots to where it is that we were at, some topics and themes, especially conversations we're at when Mercury first went retrograde. September 11th 
is when Mercury clears his post retrograde shadow period. It's also the same day that we have the first quarter moon popping off, which is always a point of action, decision and movement. And it's taking place in Sagittarius energy, which I find to be very funny. Why you may ask? Well, first of all, Sag energy, we are optimistic. We are confident. We are dreaming a bigger dream. We are so focused on the big picture of where it is that we want to end up. The funny part is, is that Mercury in the Virgo energy focuses in on the smaller details that are needed in order for us to bridge the gap from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. We need to expect for some major aha moments, some major epiphanies, some major clarity coming at us around that time. But the funny part is, is that we're also being catapulted into eclipse energy at that time, which means that we only have so much control, so much power. The closer that we get to the 17th, the less and less power and control we actually have. Eclipse energy, the cosmos is in control. We are about to be sorted out and put on the path that we failed to put ourselves upon. We are going to have some wild card energies thrown at us. We are going to expect the unexpected. September 17th, we have our full moon lunar eclipse taking place at 25 degrees in Pisces energy. Yep, that's right. We've been working on the Aries and Libra axis for the last year and a half, almost two years. This is merely but a taste of the karmic chapters that the collective will be working on from now until 2027. Pisces energy, Virgo energy share the axis of healing. Virgo energy focuses on the physical around the physical body, the mental plane. Pisces energy is everything outside of the physical realm, meaning our emotions, our spirituality, our intuition, our soul contracts. You best believe that this is going to be a doozy of a time. A full moon is a full illumination of hidden information, of details that we weren't privy to up until this particular juncture. It's an illumination of information of emotion now creeping up to the surface for acknowledgement for release. A lunar eclipse, typically speaking, removes things out of our lives while our solar eclipse adds to it. We will experience that in early October. However, the lunar eclipse right now is removing things out of our lives and in 25 degrees and ending in a closure degree in Pisces energy. This has to do with the residual emotion, the residual soul contracts that are blocking our path from being healed. This new version of self is in power. The old version of self still has fragments and debris still left in our awareness. This Pisces energy is about soul contracts, about repressed memories and emotions. It's about realizing what the goal, the vision, the dream now actually is, and equally realizing the fears, the doubts, the insecurities that are blocking us from getting in alignment with actually pursuing what it is that we need to do, we need to pursue. This is going to be a major shakeup, a major wake up. There's a lot of shadow work to be done. And again, we are not in control. Pay attention to who is coming and going around these particular eclipse events. If people are leaving, please show them the door. They are not a part of your next chapter. There is some deep seated healing work that will take place. But realistically speaking, when shit hits the fan, we look at it as a loss, as a form of punishment, not realizing that, again, the universe is in control and removing people, places and things out of our lives that are no longer meant to be a part of it. September 22nd, the sun is moving into Libra season. We now shift into a 7-9 vibration. 7 is an opportunity to find peace, harmony, and balance after the six energy that leads us to making those changes, making those adjustments. Now, Libra season is a cardinal energy, which is a time to initiate a new path, a new direction. It's also triggering the equinox energy, which equal, equal day to equal night, which means that this is a rebalancing of the karmic scales that definitely got tipped out of our favor, if you want to look at it that way, because shit did hit the fan, back at cancer season with that solstice energy. That's really when the karmic chapters that we're currently trying to wrap up when they popped off. So although it was in our favor, we don't see it like that as of yet. We will look back on this time and realize that a lot of the things that fell apart were in our favor. 
However, we're not there yet. We haven't healed to that particular perspective as of yet. In Libra season, although it is a major focus on relationship dynamics, again, the relationship dynamic that we're building within this new version of self remains at the top of the list. We are going to experience some extremes through Libra season. And of course, going through this equinox energy smack dab in the middle of eclipse season is definitely going to be very hard to feel at peace, to feel in balance, to feel like we aren't dealing with extremes. Now that exact same day on the 22nd, Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who rules over Libra season, is actually leaving Libra energy for Scorpio energy. Okay, so Scorpio energy, that is a fixed water sign. That is where we do the emotional and spiritual change and transformation needed in a, inside of our soul space, okay? We have some shadow work to undo to kind of unpack in the Scorpio energy. Basically, it is feeling where it is that we have a want, need, and desire for connection, for intimacy, for vulnerability in our relationship dynamics. We're recognizing what it is that we want, need, and desire to make us feel safe and happy and secure. But in recognizing that, we also recognize the blockages. And the blockages are holding on to the old version of self, that old realm, that old reality that that old version of self has created. So Scorpio energy is about moving into the darkness, being bold and brave and courageous enough to unearth the darkest parts of our emotions, of our spiritual selves, of our fears, doubts, and insecurities, and allow that energy to rise to the surface where we can transmute it into a source of power. We're definitely going to go through major shifts in our heart space at that time, but what's left over, we merge back together. We end up in a new state of wholeness at the end of that transit where our happiness, our joy, our safety, our security is concerned. The last thing that we got going on in September is on the 26th, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, will be moving into Libra energy. So first of all, we're all going to be chatty Cathy's. We're all going to just want to go out into the world, share our thoughts, share our ideas, share our opinions with the world around us. We're open to negotiation. We're open to compromising if it means everybody's getting back on the same page, if it means everybody would be happy and fairness, justice would be served. However, the Libra energy, hella indecisive. A lot of this, because we are still under eclipse energy at this time, is out of our control. There's going to be a lot of energies tipping the scales one way and then the next tipping them in the other whatever we arrive at whatever we talk about whatever it is that we're thinking we should do that we think that we should change we're going to be on the fence about that libra energy is going nowhere as fast we're just talk we're talking about it we're exploring it we're bouncing ideas off of other people to see how it is that they feel about some of the ideas in which we're currently percolating on are we going to implement a whole lot of change under that influence? Probably not. But again, we're in eclipse season. We are at the mercy of the cosmos and we will definitely be in a totally different place as we move into October compared to where it is that we're at at the beginning of September. So we're in for a month. It is going to be a bumpy ride. Let's put our energetic helmets on, okay? We've been training for this. We know exactly what to expect as long as we stay ahead of the game. And realistically speaking, nothing is happening to us. Everything is happening for us. So that is just a brief rundown on what we can expect September to throw our way. Let's dive into it one astro shift at a time. <laughs> 